Alright folks, welcome back to the B29 restoration project. As you can see the B29 is upside down on the table again. So for those of y'all paying attention that means things are making good progress. Um, the last video, which I still need to edit and get on there, we were building up the top of the fuselage with some balsa wood just to kind of get the, the new fiberglass nose shaped and blended into the rest of the fuselage. Um, as you can see, all of this blue area is body filler. The airplane's upside down, obviously. There's body filler all the way around. All of that blending and shaping is done. Really, it's just a whole lot of basically the same thing like what I did with that piece of balsa wood. Just fill sand, fill sand, fill sand, fill sand, just over and over and over again until you get the uh, get it to where you're wanting it. Due to the just the amount of filler that's here in this area and the fact that we're going from a balsa wood sheeted piece of foam core to a piece of fiberglass and then there was a, a hard edge here I elected to go ahead and glass all of the the bodywork area to kind of lock all that in together so all that was done before I glassed it obviously I came in here and I cut a big hole where the landing gear goes um, I'm gonna actually have this entire section removable that way the gear can get put in and out fairly easily and then the gear doors will be easier to work on if you ever have to replace a hinge or fix a broken hinge or something. You can just pull the whole panel off after disconnecting the actuators to fix that. So that's glass. I did that earlier this morning, letting that cure for now. I've got to come in and make another piece of the nose here that I'm going to put on the bottom, on the inside of this, that's going to create a flange. Really, it's just going to be another thick layup of that, and then it will get epoxy or high salt into the inside of the uh the nose cone area and the last big project left to do other than sanding and a whole lot of it um is getting these gear doors done as you can see here i've got the hinges done this gear door is actually done i've added a couple of pieces of quarter inch balsa wood here on the front and back side these are just uh ledges for the gear to rest or the door to rest on once it has closed and also prevent any try and seal the gap to get rid of any air that may be pressurizing inside of here um, this back one i've still got to cut the groove out of the middle i'll do that later so this video is mostly i'm going to show you what i did on this side to do the other side and then the nose gear doors are obviously different because they're curved and anybody who has ever done gear doors they kind of suck I, I really dread looking, dread planning or looking forward to doing them, but once you kind of, or at least once I get in the mood and get in the swing of things, that actually it's, they're not that bad, especially when you have ones like this where you got a nice straight edge here that's uh, pretty uh, collinear to where you're not having to deal with curves. That nose is gonna really suck because of the curves because <laughs> you gotta try and get the, ax the, the, the hinge axis on the same same line otherwise it does some weird stuff so anyways enough yapping let's get to talking so i basically just copied the dimension from that side to this side for where the hinges are located and then i just have a little number two screw here holding them in place and then the doors i cut and got those fitting reasonably nice to the opening so they sit on the ledge and now the next thing i gotta do let's see if i can get y'all a, a better view of this whole process from from where it was so you can see with the door on up against the hinge it's obviously not going to go all the way up to the edge so i'm just going to make marks here for where the door needs to be notched and then I'm gonna go over to the sanding table and I'll notch that real quick okay here you can see we've got the two notches here if we put those up here and the door in place it fits reasonably well um, we do need to yeah, be fine I can fine tune the door just a little bit so now I just took a couple of pieces of wire to replace the cotter pins for these hinges these little pieces of wire are about 564 
so about a one millimeter or so. Just put those in there. It makes it easier to uh, to put the door on and off repeatedly because you'll be doing a lot of that. Fold those hinges down, put the door back in place, and then grabbing the inside, you can see how if I try and fold the, the hinge up to the door, it just picks the door up on the back one. Front one does the same thing, just a little bit, but not as bad. One thing I learned on the other side, if you taper the notches you just made to where it's almost uh, paper thin on the edge, this will actually fold up pretty close to the door itself. So I'm gonna go hit that real quick and take care of that. All right, here you can see I got the little, the tapered edges sanded in there. And again, we'll put the door in place. We'll fold the hinge up and it pretty much on the front here, it does push it up just a little bit, but not by much. The back also does the same thing. It picks it up a little bit, but honestly, that makes it fit pretty nicely. So the door is a little tight fitting here on the front and the back edge. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna adjust this back edge just a little bit so we leave a little bit more space there for, for paint and whatnot later on. Okay, another thing I've done is this door is pretty, like this edge is pretty flat, but it does have just a little bit of a curvature to it. So one thing I've done is I've taken a sanding block and I've beveled this edge, which is why it looks like a fairly large gap. That way once the door opens, the edge of the door will clear the skin here. This edge has also been beveled. You could probably tell in the, in the video. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit these two areas that I've scuffed up with some kicker. And then I'm just gonna take some medium CA and I'm gonna put a couple of fairly large drops on these door hinges. Actually, I need to scuff them first before I get ahead of myself. And these hinges, I'm just going to use thin or medium CA to hold them to the door. And then what I'll do is later on is I'll actually drill out a couple of holes and they'll actually get screwed to the door. That way, if it ever needs to be replaced, you can just very easily unscrew the door, replace the hinge, throw the door back on. So now, like I said medium CA, put a fairly large, a couple large droplets on here. Put the door in place. And reaching from the inside, I will push the hinge into the door. And that will, should, glue the hinge to the door. There we go. Now you can see you open the door and it just falls right open. The back's a little high, so I can adjust that a little bit just by removing the, the screw here. And adjusting the hinge just a wee little bit. And that's pretty much it with the main landing gear doors. These are relatively easy to do because of their fairly flat shape. 